My RG-552 was a bit late to the party, but does it make a grand entrance? Let's talk about that. Hello and welcome to Modern Broadcast. Now let's talk about some retro handheld gaming. Here we have yet another Anbernic device, which is a gaming company located in China. Founded in 2017 with a variety of handhelds under their belt, let's see if the RG-552 is the best retro handheld emulation device that you can buy. The 552 is in a deluxe plastic shell and comes in silver or matte black. Ambernick has finally moved away from the RK3326 chip, as this device has a Rock Chip RK3399 6-core CPU processor at 1.8 GHz and 4 GB LPDDR4 RAM. The screen is a 5.36-inch IPS display with a resolution of 1920 by 1152. It has two 3200 mAh batteries. The device is dual booting, meaning that it can boot into Android or Linux, but more on that in a moment. At the time of making this video, the RG-552 comes in around $227 US dollars. This device is at a premium price tag, and included with the device is the charger cable, a charger, a glass screen protector, two micro SD cards, one for the TF1 slot holding our Linux operating system, and the second micro SD card holding some games that will go on the TF2 slot. The device also comes with some alcohol wipes for installing the screen protector. Let's take a look at the device. As you can see here, like any other Anbernic device, there are dual analog sticks that feel great. They also click in giving you R3 and L3 buttons. The A, B, X, Y buttons are slightly textured and use membrane feedback, giving you that satisfying feeling when pushed. Unlike other Ambernic devices, the A, B, X, Y buttons are colored in. The D-pad shares the same texture as the A, B, X, Y buttons, and again has that quality feeling. Up top, you have your start and select buttons. On top of the device, we see we have our L1, L2, R1, R2 buttons in line once again. I would like to see if on the next device, if Amber Nick would consider making L2 and R2 as triggers instead of the end line buttons. We have a 3.5mm headphone jack, an OTG power supply type C port with an additional OTG type C port used for accessories such as controllers. Amber Nick has added our mini HDMI port back and also gave the device a heat vent that helps keep the device cool. There isn't much on the left side of the device, but here we have our volume up and volume down buttons. Each has a tactile feel. On the right side, we have our power button. On the bottom of the device, we have our two micro SD card slots. The TF1 slot is for booting into our Linux operating system, while the TF2 slot is where we put all of our ROMs, music, and videos. Now, as many users have requested, the system is dual boot, meaning that you can boot into Linux and Android 7.1.2, but we'll dive more into that later. On the corners of the device, we have our stereo speakers that are quite loud, and I rarely have to turn the volume up above the minimum level. In the center of the device, we have a reset button, which is great for a quick reboot, and an F function key. The rear device has those iconic rubber pads that Anbernic is known for. There is also a new design of the rear of the device and a system fan output on the side. As previously stated, the RG-552 has two 3200 mAh batteries for a total of 6400 mAh. The battery is advertised to last up to six hours. However, your miles may vary depending on usage. Let's do a quick comparison with the other Ambernic devices. As you can see here, compared to the 351MP, the layout is practically the same, however the obvious difference is its sheer size 
We also have that reacquired mini HDMI out port on top. When you get your RG552, it'll have a micro SD card with the default Linux based operating system. This card will go in the TF1 slot of the device. To boot into Android, simply leave the TF1 slot empty. Starting with the Linux side of things, this is an improvement over the older Anbernic devices, however I still find it lacking. My system also has a sound delay, however there was a firmware update that fixes this problem. I'll be posting a video shortly on how to update your device if you too have this problem. Moving over to Android, in my opinion this is where the RG552 really shines. Out of the box it's currently running Android 7. It has a TV launcher as the default and only user interface. It comes preloaded with a lot of premium emulators pre-installed along with RetroArch. You'll quickly notice it doesn't have Google Play Store, so any Android apps will have to be sideloaded onto the device. This too has been updated with a firmware update, and I will have the video showing how to do so shortly. I sideloaded the DIG emulator front end here and set it to auto boot on Stardo, making for a clean interface. Let me know in the comments below if you'd like a tutorial on how to set up the DIG emulator front end. The RK3399 chip can easily support Dreamcast, Sega Saturn, and Nintendo 64 no problem. This device can even play some GameCube games. While it can't play the whole GameCube library, many lower end games should run with some tinkering. Having the 5x3 aspect ratio screen unfortunately gives retro games the infamous black bars, however with the screen size being as large as it is, this isn't much of a hindrance. It looks great for systems like GBA and PSP. The 552 also has Moonlight built in to connect to your PC and play Steam games which look amazing. This screen is the best out there as far as color saturation, contrast, and brightness. It will really bring your games to life. Let's move over to some gameplay of Super Nintendo, PlayStation, Nintendo 64, Dreamcast, Sega Saturn, GameCube, and lastly some PC streaming via Moonlight. So starting things out, we're going to start with Super Nintendo here, and I apologize for there's some weird audio blipping. It might be the adapter I used, um, the mini HDMI adapter that I was using um, on the device, or it could have been the capture card. I'm not entirely sure, but there's this weird kind of just like cutting in and out uh, during the game audio. Moving on over to Crash Bandicoot for the uh, Sony PlayStation. I've actually never played this game um, as a kid. I've only played it as an adult and I am not good at this at all. Again, I just want to apologize for that audio clipping as during gameplay, it was actually very smooth. Um, I'm not entirely sure what's causing that to kind of freak out. Here we have some Majora's Mask for the Nintendo 64. I played this a lot uh, growing up. And, you know, to this day, I have not beaten Majora's Mask. I've only beaten Ocarina of Time. Um, definitely, maybe we should do a video of a playthrough of Majora's Mask. Thank <laughs> you. 
This device handles uh, Dreamcast really well. Here we have Marvel vs. Capcom. I don't know about you guys, but I always use Wolverine and Spider-Man. Who are your mains? Let me know in the comments down below. Moving over, we're doing some uh, Sega Saturn. This is Dragon Force. I was actually gifted a um, Sega Saturn when I was a little kid, and uh, I only got two games for the system the entire time. Uh, one was Dragon Force, and the other was Guardian Heroes. And I just absolutely love the art style of this game and the way it plays. It's like a tactical RPG kind of thing. Um, definitely worth checking out if uh, you have not played before. Here we have the Nintendo GameCube Luigi's Mansion. Um, as you can definitely already tell, there's some graphical glitches, such as Luigi's face. Now, as I stated earlier, is that the GameCube isn't gonna run perfectly. However, it will run playable. Um, I mean, I'm able to walk around, call out Mario. Um, we just kind of get this black square that keeps popping up, but the buttons are working. Mario. 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 Let's go ahead and try out some uh, Legend of Zelda Wind Waker for, again, the GameCube. You can definitely kind of notice some stuttering here and there um, going on. And when we actually get to the gameplay, it is definitely like in slow-mo. Um... <laughs> When running around, it just feels weird. Um, I mean, we're, we're slowing. It's playable. It's doable. It's just not that enjoyable. I mean, you could definitely just tell right here, the audio just sounds awful. Um, again, is it playable? Yes but uh, definitely maybe have the sound off while playing. So this was interesting. So here is Mario Kart Double Dash, and it was just insanely slow, but the audio seemed almost like kind of correct.
So other other than the popping, the music is playing at normal speed. Uh, but again, like Wind Waker, you can just feel the the sluggishness happening as as we're driving around. Um, technically playable. Lastly, we're going to do some Moonlight. Um, the audio popping and slowdown was not happening on the actual device. Again, that was the recorder thing. Um, the only time that it was accurate where there was popping and kind of stuttering was on the GameCube. But uh, here we have Rainbow Billy, uh, The Curse of the Leviathan. Um, I actually backed this on Kickstarter. It's a cute little game, kind of Pokemon-y, Zelda-y kind of esque um it's really cute definitely recommend uh giving it a shot Is the RG552 worth the upgrade? In my opinion, no. I think there are other devices out there with better specs and that can have similar capabilities. If this is going to be your first and only retro gaming emulation device, then I'd say it might be worth it. The screen is beautiful and is the best Ambernick has ever done. The device is well built and the size and weight is comfortable. It has built-in Wi-Fi and having that dual boot option is a welcome addition to the lineup. My previous recommendation still stands however is if you're a casual player looking for a premium product to play up to PlayStation, I'd recommend the 351 MP. Thanks so much for watching, let me know in the comments below what your thoughts are on the RG552. Will you be upgrading or purchasing this handheld? Or do you have a different recommendation that outplays this device? If you enjoyed this video please consider leaving a like and subscribe.